أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى عليه وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإسار لا يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam The title of my khutbah today is Prohibition of pride and arrogance Kibar wa taqabbar Prohibition of taqabbar in Islam And it is important for us to appreciate this Because of the fact that Taqabbar Arrogance is one of the instruments of Ashaytan as you will see in many verses of the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by which actually as Shaitan had promised from the beginning that he would use arrogance to attack believers in order to move them out of Amr Salaam al Mustaqim. Now in Islam we are encouraged as human beings to aim high and to achieve high goals in life. You know, uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, I mean as Muslims we are encouraged, you are try as much as possible to achieve as high, as high as you can. And whatever you do, be good in it. And because the Prophet himself has said that in Allah you will act in the Amal Amal and Yakir. Allah loves the believer, that is a servant, Muslims. Allah loves that when we do something, we excel in it. Allah loves us when we do something, we excel in it. Also, Islam expects that we can motivate people actually through our achievements, you know, and our high goals in life. We can talk about them in order to motivate people and also in order to show the favors of Allah upon us. You know, we'll see what Allah says, what Allah says in the Quran. Allah says, Allah says, the mercies of Allah upon you, you can talk about them. However, whatever our achievements and attainments in life, Islam strongly prohibits pride and arrogance based on our achievements. You know, as human beings, sometimes arrogance tend to enter us based on our achievements in life. You look around and you think, there's nobody as good as me in a particular area. Or oh, I'm so high in society now. And as shaitan starts to play with your mind, and arrogance and pride starts to enter you. Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has warned Muslims and has prohibited against both pride and arrogance. Now, when we talk about pride, pride is an attribute of human beings. It can be positive, it can be negative. You know, sometimes you can express pride in a, a positive, a nice way. For example, you can say that I am proud to be a Muslim. That's in a positive way. You can use pride in a positive way. But in a negative way, it's a situation of the heart. That consequently leads to the outward attitude of arrogance. You know, pride, it starts with pride in the negative pride in the mind, in the heart, which then is expressed through arrogant behavior outwardly. And it is one of the worst attitudes that we are urged to keep away from as Muslims. If you look in the Quran, the Quran tells us about people who live before us that arrogance actually has caused their downfall. For example, if you look at Ash-Shaytan, Quran talks about the fact that it is arrogance that brought the downfall of Ash-Shaytan, as you will see. Look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a king. Allah raised him upon earth. He had power all over Egypt and all the surroundings. 
arrogance, you know. Wa qala ala rabbukum wal ala. When he was, he thought there was nobody that he could not control. He became arrogant and he was telling the people, he said, you have to see me as your only God. <laughs> he became very arrogant and threw that Allah drowned him. Look at Karun. Karun had a lot of money, he had wealth. After the wealth became so much, it now went to his head, he was now boasting in the Quran, indicating that it is his knowledge, it is capacity that has brought him all this wealth. Allah drowned him. And you see, even in our philosophies, in our Yoruba philosophy, our, 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 our Yoruba philosophers used to say, they say that arrogance, you know, is the, is, 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 is the beginning of a downfall of a person. You know, when you become arrogant and you do not desist from it, gradually you see people who are arrogant will usually fall. Therefore, pride is a very bad at, uh, attitude, uh, attribute of the mind, whereby a person thinks that in his heart that you are better than others. You know, that is what negative pride brings to a person. You think that you are better than everybody and you become arrogant in that regard. In relation to a shaitan, you'll be able to see that it is pride, negative pride that actually led to shaitan's arrogance and brought his downfall. You know, when Allah created Sayyidina Adam, the first human being that Allah created, Allah created him from his own hands. And Allah commanded all the angels to bow down for him. Allah commanded that shaitan was also there, bow down. For to, 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 to respect the glory and the majesty of Allah. A shaitan said no. All the angels, as the Quran tells us, all the angels obeyed Allah and bowed to Adam. But a shaitan, Abba, he said no, he was not going to bow. Allah now says in Surah Al-Araf, Quran chapter 7, ayah 12, Allah says, Ma mala'aka Allah, tajjuda is amarutuka. Allah says, You shaitan, why did you not bow to Adam? When I have commanded you to do so, as Shaitan said, He said, I won't bow down for him. I am better than him. Because you created me from fire and you created him from clay. You know? Then, because of this, this is, the, this is where the couple started. Because of this, Allah said, Allah says, you cannot be arrogant and stay in our gender. Our gender does not accommodate arrogance. Allah says, get out of it. It is not permitted that you stay in it and you are arrogant. Get out of it. And from today, you will become one of the lowest persons. You will become one of the lowest creatures. So you see, as Shaitan was elevated, he was in a high position. But the couple arrogance saw that he was sent out. Now, because the shaitan was sent out based on arrogance, he made a promise to Allah. Qal, as shaitan said, He said, okay, O oh Allah, be patient with me until the day of resurrection. Qal, Allah says, Inna kaminal munzari. We will leave you, we will have patience to you, with you, until the day of resurrection. Qal, as shaitan now said, Fadima with the same thing that you have used to send me out of Jannah, I will wait for them and move them away from your right path. Because, you know, he said, for the man had waited. He said, because of the same thing, Allah removed the shaitan from our Jannah because of the cover. As shaitan now promised, I will use the same thing to prevent people from getting to your street path. So, you see, it is one of the instruments of a shaitan. You pray, you fast, you do everything. And you think you have, com you have compiled everything. You know, a shaitan that can use the cover to spoil all your deeds, and, you know, and take you out of the straight path. This is why the Holy Prophet Muhammad said, a person that has an altar of arrogance in his heart cannot stay in our gender. In an hadith narrated by Ibn al Qal, he said, Qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger of Allah, the peace and blessings of Allah, the people of Allah, he said, La the prophet said, no person, no person will enter hellfire if in his heart he has an atom's weight of Iman. Anybody with an atom's weight of Iman in his heart will not enter hellfire. The same thing. 
anybody with an atom's weight of arrogance in his heart will not enter them. Anybody, now you begin to see, you know, somebody may say that he has Iman. You know, well, he has Iman, yet he is, he, 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 he is arrogant. How would you resolve that? When the prophet has indicated that anybody with an atom's weight of Iman will not go to hellfire. But anybody with an atom's weight of uh, uh, arrogance will also not enter again. You know, the Ulama indicates that the two cannot, the two cannot combine the person. That is arrogance and Iman. If you have arrogance in your mind, you know, it means your Iman is not complete because they indicated that when Allah describes all people of belief in the Quran everywhere, Allah describes them with the quality of humbleness. For example, in Surah Al-Rahman, Allah says, Al-Ladina Yamshur, Iman Al-Rahman, Al-Ladina Yamshur, Allah Al-Aridi, Haunan. You know, Allah says, the belief, the, the, those who believe in the God of mercy, when they walk on the earth, they walk on earth humbly. So, I mean, if you have an utter weight of the couple in your mind, it means your Iman is faulty. You know, pride, arrogance, destroys faith as fire destroys wood. This is one tradition. You know, pride, it destroys Iman as fire destroys dry wood. Allah has stated that we are all created, I mean, created equally. We should try as much as possible. You know, don't think, don't ever let it cross your mind that you are better than any other human being. Because Allah says, Yeah, you are nurse, O mankind. Inna khalakna min wa unfa. We have created all of you from the same roots, from the same source. One man and one woman. And we have made you into nations, states, tribes, in order for you to know one another. In the The most honored of you in the sight of Allah is he who has the most God consciousness. In Allah Allah is most knowledgeable, most informed. You know, even the taqwa which can make you elevated than any other person. You don't know it. It's only Allah who knows it. This is where Allah says, In akramakum, in the Allah, the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah. And it is only Allah who knows it, who are at call. So it is very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that we should try as much as possible and keep away. We should evaluate ourselves and make sure that, you know, we do not let arrogance destroy our faith and destroy our good deeds. The expression of arrogance can be in different ways. You know, if you look in the Quran and also the in your advice of the Holy Prophet in relation to prohibition of arrogance, arrogance can be expressed in different ways. One, you know, arrogance, you can, you can express arrogance in relation to the worship of Allah and you can express arrogance in relation to other people of your choice. In all these, in all these, we have to try as much as possible to make sure that we check ourselves. Because actually Allah has warned us in relation to arrogance. Allah has indicated that pride, pride, you know, is his own garment. In one hadith narrated by Abu Huraira Khan, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is hadith of Qudsi, in which Allah is speaking, hadith of Qudsi. Yaqulullah ta'ala. Allah the Most High is saying in this hadith of Qudsi, he said, Al-Kibri ya uridai, wa la azamatu izari, famanna, famanna za'ani wahidat minuhuma adakhaltuhu al-na, wa fi riwayatu fazzaktuhu fi al-na. Rawahu Muslim. Allah says, pride is my own cloak. That is, pride is my garment. Because Allah has the authority to, be, to, to, to have the pride, and, because he created everything. Greatness and pride belongs to Allah. So Allah says, pride is my garment, you know, and greatness is my rule. You know, Allah says, al kibriyahu pride is my garment, wal azamatu izari, and greatness is my, uh, my, 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 my rule. Anybody who contests with me in any of the two, pride and greatness, I will throw him in hellfire. Allah says, anybody who contests with me in any of the two, I will throw him in hellfire. So it is very, very essential, you know, that we have this in our mind. When someone, when a shaitan wants to pray with your mind as he promises, and he, because you have reached a certain state, he wants, you think you have done something that nobody has ever done. He wants to spoil your work and throw pride and arrogance into your heart. Look, 
the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in his lifetime demonstrated, despite the reverence, the great reverence of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet had authority, he was a prophet of Allah, he was a perfect, perfect example. The Sahaba, everybody, had, even the non-Muslims respected him. Yes, the Prophet avoided pride. He was the most humble person, you know, and he should be the greatest example to us. There is a hadith narrated by Anas. He said, Ja Rajulun ilan Nabi, Fakar, Ya Hayran Bariya. He said, Somebody came, one man came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he extolled him. He said, Ya Hayran Bariya. He said, Oh, the best of mankind. Fakar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet humbly said, Zaka Ibrahim. That description is for Ibrahim, not for me. You know, he said, Ya Hayran Bariya. He said, Oh, the best of mankind. He said, Zaka Ibrahim. That is Ibrahim. Give that the, the, uh, the, uh, description to Ibrahim. He, you know, he, he, he true modesty. He, he, he didn't want to take that onto him. And he referred it to back to Ibrahim, who he knew was greater than him. Because Allah says in the Quran, in Quran chapter 2, 130, You know, he said, we, because Allah himself said that he has chosen Ibrahim. He has chosen Ibrahim, and Allah has made him special in this world, and in the hereafter as well. And you know, if you look at the salawats, when the ayah, when the ayah came, you know, that, إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلْعَيْكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُوَ الَّذِينَ عَابَهُ يُسَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُ when the ayah came that, oh, Allah and his angels, you know, send blessings on, on the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All you who believe us, send blessings upon him too. The Sahaba asked the Prophet, how do we send blessings to you? He said, oh, say, who do you say? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. You know, he said, ask Allah, oh Allah, send blessings on the Prophet, on Muhammad and his family, as you said on Ibrahim and his family. So the Prophet did not attract arrogance or pride to himself. So it is very, very essential that we know this. And there's another hadith narrated by Mutraf, you know, Ibn Abdullah. He said, in Talaktufi Wafdin Bani Amir in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I was a part of a delegate, you know, who came to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fakulna, and we started, before we started talking to the Prophet, they came as a, as, a, as a group, you know, before they started saying, so Kulna, we said, Anta Sayyiduna, Fakala as Sayyid Allah. He said, they said, you, the Prophet, you are our Lord. And the Prophet said, the Lord is Allah, not me. He said, you are our Lord. The Prophet said, the Lord is Allah. Fakulna, and they said again, Wa'afdaduna fadlen, wa'azamuna tulen. He said, and they said, you are the most honored of us, you are the most high of us. For Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet then said, Kulu kawlikum awbada kawlikum wa la yastajiriyan naqmu shaitan. Say what you want to say. Don't let a shaitan use you as an agent. You know? Because you know, a shaitan will use somebody as an agent. Send them to you. And they will start extolling you. Extolling you. Until you lose your balance. And you think, ah, I'm a very big person and arrogance comes into you. The wife wanted to do the same to the prophet. So said, if you have any message, if you have anything to say, say it, please. Stop extolling. Don't let a shaitan use you as an agent in my area. So it is very, very essential that we learn from this from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because as I said in that ayah, when Allah told shaitan to get out, this is the promise he said. He said, for the waited. For the reason that you have sent me out, I will use the same reason to prevent the people from following your right path. And it is essential. A shaitan will not prevent you from praying. Because he cannot stop you from praying. He will not prevent you from fasting. He will not he will let you do everything. You will get everything. Everything. And it is these small, small things. You know? He knows that by just that small thing, he will be able to destroy all the good things that you have done. May Allah continue to protect us and have mercy on us. Now, when arrogance enters the heart, as I said, it, it, it affects our behavior in various ways, in relation to Allah and in relation to people. Allah has mentioned and prohibited arrogance of human beings of his creation. Allah has warned us about bewaring of arrogance towards him, Allah. This is exemplified in the stories of Fir'aun, as I said, and Qawrun and Nimru. You know, Fir'aun, Allah gave him authority over land. After Allah gave him authority over land, he wanted to, you know, he was showing arrogance towards Allah, he was telling the people to call him God. 
He said, I'm a rock of Allah. No, he was challenging Musa that I am your Lord. I am, I am your telling people of Israel that I am your Lord. You know, the same thing, Nimrud, King Nimrud, the same thing. When Nimrud, when Ibrahim went to him, you know, he was saying that there's no other God apart from him. <coughs> so it is very, very essential that we prevent this. Allah says of those who are arrogant on earth, in relation to Allah. You know, there are many verses in the Quran where Allah warns us of not being arrogant. And a lot of people who tell them to worship Allah, they are arrogance. It is the arrogance that prevented them from worshiping. Allah now says, Sa'asirifu an ahayati. الذين يتكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق وإن يروا كل آية لا يؤمنوا بها وإن يروا سبيل الرشد لا يتخذوه سبيلا وإن يروا سبيل الجي يتخذوه سبيلا ذلك لأنهم كذبوا بآياتنا وكان عنها غافلين الله says anyone سأصرف عن آيات الذين يتكبرون في الأرض الله says anybody who is arrogant on earth I will cause that to move them away from seeing my signs you know, arrogance. Arrogance will not let you see the signs of Allah. You will not let and that's anybody who is arrogant on hell. The arrogance will call their asking for Anuayati. You know, it will prevent them. I will remove my signs. You know, I will remove all my signs away from those who are arrogant on earth. If they see anything, any ayah of Allah that you will see, when the sun rises in the morning, you say Allah Akbar, see the sun running. He said the mutakabirun, they will not see it as a sign of Allah. The arrogant will not see us because Allah will have removed all his signs from them. When they see any sign of Allah, they will not believe in it. When they see the wrath, their arrogance will not let them take it as the right path. You call them, come and worship, they say, no, 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 we are bigger than that. You know? So arrogance allow more. You know, arrogance will actually consume. The arrogant person at the end of the day. And Allah says also, What let in a kind of who be ayatina was tak babu alha ulai kas abuna fiya kalimu. Allah says, Those who belie our, our revelations, you know, was tak biru alha and feel arrogant and big above the statements of Allah. Allah says, Pray. Allah says, Fast. He says, No, we are bigger than fasting. We are bigger than, 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 than praying. I'm not be putting my head on the ground and I'm bigger than that. Allah says, all those who do that, who like us, Allah says, I mean, when they come back to us, they will be inmates of hellfire and they will be there for them, for, for, for forever. You know, the prostration that we do in prayer is the greatest humility. You know, our head is the highest part of our body. And when we prostrate to Allah, it is the greatest sign of humility to Him. Anyone who says he cannot prostrate for Allah is arrogant to Allah. May Allah not make us amongst them. Human beings can also, you can, you, can be, you can be arrogant to another human being in our relationships. You know? Therefore, you find, for example, Saint Luqman, in the Quran, when he was advising, when death was approaching Saint Luqman, Luqman was addressing his son in the Quran. He first advised him about worship, praying, and things like that. He advised him about everything that we do, worship. Then later, he warned him to beware. You know, he prohibited him from arrogance. He said, Ya Bani, Ya Bunayya, Akimu Salata, Wamro bin Ma'aruf, One Hal and Munka, Wasbir Alama Asaba Kaila Zalek and Nazir Umur. He started saying, Oh, my son, I'm old, I'm leaving you now, but I warn you, Akimu Salat, make sure that you pray as we pray. What's the uh, what will be my roof? And make sure that you command what is good. Pray, command what is good. What? One hand in Munka and prohibit what is prohibited. What's the Alama as well? Make sure that you are patient about everything that happens to you. In the Zalika, we ask you more. That is one of the signs of good character. Then he said, Wala to say ir had dekal in nas. Wala to say ir had dekal in nas. ولا تمشي في الأرض مرها إن الله لا يحب كل مختار فقوم. he said don't be pompous don't push up yourself in arrogance to people and don't walk arrogantly on the surface of the earth. this what your man was telling his children his son after telling him to pray and do other things he said ولا تسير حد يكلم الناس he said don't be pompous don't puff up in arrogance 
so that a lot of people, you know, when you meet them in a meeting or maybe somewhere, you see the way they pop up to show that uh, you see arrogance on their face. And the one says, What are to say and have the khadinas? Don't puff up in arrogance to people. Well, our township in Ali the Maraha, don't walk arrogantly on the surface of the earth. In Allah, Allah, you have both called the Mortal for who? Allah does not love those who are arrogant and pompous on earth. <coughs> so it is very, very essential for us to be able to say this. Now, you see, in our lifetime, you have seen the result of arrogance, whereby, you know, when people believe that they are better than others. In many of the bad things that happen, have happened on earth, like genocides, you know, we know what happened in Rwanda. It starts, one community will now be, continue to propagate that we are better than that community. You know, in Rwanda during the genocide, when the, I mean, the Hutus were killing the Tutis, you know, the Hutus were saying that the Tutis were like uh, coco cockroaches. You know, they said it is only Allah, and they, 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 are, they are saying that the, 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 the Hutus were of a better, of a better creation than the Tutsis. You know, look at what happened in Serbia, you know, and in Kosovo. You find out that that is usually what starts. And it can create a lot of destruction on earth when one community believes that well, they are better than the other. And they start treating them badly. And that is where arrogance can lead human beings. So it is very, very essential for us to be able to keep away from this. But you may now ask me, what do we really, how, how, how would you really, I mean, uh, uh, specifically identify arrogance? The Sahaba, you know, when the Prophet was saying this all the time, they were concerned. And they asked him. In an hadith narrated by Ibn Mas'ul, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet said, لا يرقل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثال زرة من كبر He said, when the Prophet said that, Anybody who has an atom's weight of arrogance in his heart will not enter the Jannah. For call a Rajul. One man then said, he said, in the Rajul, said Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, you said that anybody who has an, a, a small drop of, uh, of arrogance will not enter the Jannah. He said, in the Rajul, you hear an Yaqul Athawbuhu Hassan, wa Na'aluhu Hassan. What of if a person loves that he wears very good clothes? and very good shoes. That is, he likes to dress well every time, you know? He was trying to ask the prophet, is this arrogance trying to dress well, wearing good clothes and wearing good shoes? Fakar. And the prophet said, he said, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibul jamal al kibru batarul haq wa gamtul nas. He said, Allah is beautiful and he loves what is beautiful. Wearing good dresses and shoes is not what is arrogance. He said, al kibru arrogance is batarul haq. You know, subverting the truth. That is based on your arrogance, you subvert the truth, will come to nurse and undermining people. What we call arrogance is subverting truth, through arrogance to Allah, or undermining people that by looking down on them. This is what we mean by arrogance. So it's very, very essential. You know, it's very, very essential that we understand this. You will not want to accuse somebody that maybe when Allah has blessed him and he dresses well, he is neat. You think that it's not, that is not part of our, arrogance in relation to character. You know, in relation to character, you want to subvert the truth. You do not want to submit yourself to Allah or you undermine, you look down on people. This is what <coughs> arrogance is about. Now, how do you keep away from pride and arrogance? Many scholars have written about this. For example, Imam Ghazali has written about it. And also one of the leading scholars of Nigeria, Usman Bunfodi, Usman Danfodi, in his, kita, in his book, Kitab al you know, and they talk a lot about, because of the importance of this, they talk a lot about keeping away from it. And they say, how can we keep away from this? Both Al-Ghazali and Uthman Bunfodio have advised that we can keep away from arrogance and pride by, in two ways, cognition and action. You know, true cognition and action. What do we mean by cognition? Al-Ghazali indicates that, first, you need cognition to know, knowing first why you are acting proudly. You need to be able to know what makes you act proudly and arrogantly and then convince yourself against it. If it is wealth, think of the faith of Pharaoh and the root. If, it, if you have so much money, and this is, this is the benefit of the, of the stories of people before us in the Quran. He said if it is your wealth, that is making you arrogant. He said, think of Pharaoh and think of Karun. When they are arrogant based on their wealth, you know, they were drowned. And he said, if it is knowledge, if you have so much knowledge, because knowledge can make a person also arrogant. You know, you see some people, they, they think they are so very knowledgeable. 
You know, when you want, when they are talking and you want to engage with them, you say, who are you? You don't talk when I'm talking. You know, say so you don't talk when I'm talking. They think they are, they, 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 they have the they uh, monopoly of knowledge. Allah says, if it is knowledge, that is making you arrogant. Remember what Allah has said, Upon every knowledgeable person, there is somebody who has a higher knowledge. There's an open, open, it's tabak with tabak. Upon every knowledgeable person, you have somebody who has a better knowledge. Look, yes, I'm a professor. You know, the other day, not long ago, I was coming to the mosque, and my, my vehicle broke down on the road. You know, I just looked at it, I didn't know what was happening. So one of our brothers here, the deputy imam to one of our brothers, he came. You know, he came, his own specialization, he works with the AA. He just came, he looked at it, he looked at it, he saw a few things, ah, I know what is happening. In just a few minutes, you know, the vehicle was on the way again. <laughs> Even though I'm a professor, I couldn't do that. I don't, because I don't know it. Fuck a cool lazy element, I leave. Upon every knowledgeable person, there's somebody who has a better knowledge in another area than yourself. So it's very, very essential. You know, and in relation to action, remember you are a creature of Allah. So that is cognition, you know. You have to take cognizance of the fact of what is making you arrogant. If it is wealth, think of Kauru, think of Namuru. If it is power, think of Fir'aun. If it is knowledge, think of what Allah says. If it is knowledge, think of Ashaban. Ashaban has a lot of knowledge. It is his knowledge actually that pushed him to arrogance. When Allah told him, Allah, your creator tells you, I've created Adam, bow for him. But because of this knowledge, I can't bow for him. You know, Allah, I'm better than him. Because you know, you created me from, from, from fire, you created him from, 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 from clay. So fire is stronger than clay. Actually, the ulama indicates that because nobody has ever made you know, that type of, before, before Shaitan, nobody has ever made that type of analogy. So the ulama indicated that it shows a time story because he was using the concept of chaos, you know, analogy, to show that it was better. He said, you created me from fire, you created him from clay. You don't you know that fire is stronger than clay, it can burn it. Every so he was using, was, he, the scholar said that was the first, Shaitan was the first person who used chaos, analogy. Because of his knowledge. If it is knowledge, think of our shaitan. Ah, that knowledge, arrogant, brought him down. Now, in relation to our action, remember that you are a creature of Allah. Allah created you from humble beginnings. You know? And then you are as big as you think you are. And remember that you will go back to the humble beginnings again. Allah tells us in Surah to Yasin, Awa lam yara insana anna khalaq. Awa lam yara, awa lam yara insana anna khalaq. Now, men not fathin faida huwa khasimun mubi. What the rabbi learned at Mafel, you know, Allah says, does man not remember? Don't you remember? Now you are a very arrogant, argumentative person. You argue against Allah on everything. Allah says, don't a human being remember that we created, we created him from notfa, a very weak fluid, you know? And now, he is an open aggressor, an open, 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 open contender, you know? And he, what the rabbi learned at them. If you say anything, he'll give you an example. You say Allah exists. But what of this? What of that? He gave you so many examples. What the rabbi learned at them. He continued to give, argue, and give examples. You know, Allah indicates you only have to remember your humble beginnings. And you go back to your humble beginnings when your time comes. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam prohibits arrogance both from the Quran and the Sunnah. And it is one of the instruments of Shaitan by which, you know, we, I mean, it, it can eat up all our iman, our good deeds. Mm -hmm. And we should try as much as possible to evaluate ourselves. It starts from pride in the heart. And gradually it will be represented in, 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 our, in, in, our, in, in our actions. May Allah continue to protect us from arrogance and may He continue to deliver us, inshallah. In the second part of my khutbah, I want to remind you that the second aspect, the opposite of arrogance is modesty. You know, the opposite of arrogance is modesty. Muslims have to be modest. The more the faith enters your heart, actually in Islam, the more the more knowledge comes to you, the more, I mean, faith comes to you, the more modest you become. You know? Iyad ibn Himar, Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna Allah awha ilayya 
أن أن تواضعوا حتى لا يفخر أحد على أحد ولا يبغي أحد على أحد. Said, make sure that you humble yourself. You are Allah. Oh, man, make sure that you humble yourself. Said, humble yourself to the extent that one of you will not boast against another, or one of you will not be arrogant against another. So it's very, very essential for us to know this. You know, the Prophet will pray all the time. He will pray, you know, to Allah. Even though Allah has given, he continues to pray that may Allah still will seek <laughs> refuge of Allah. You know, even from arrogance. And in the last hadith that I want us to benefit from, because what makes us arrogant is this. A lot of the time, you want to be arrogant because you think by being arrogant, people will then respect you. You want, you want to show your position. You want to elevate yourself. Listen to this hadith from Umar. Umar gave this hadith when he was, in this a statement from Umar, when he was on the member. Umar said, Ya you are nas. He said, Oh mankind. And I'm telling you the same thing. Ya you are nas. He said, Oh mankind. Tawadahu. Make sure that you humble yourselves. Fa in ni samitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yahu. Umar said, Oh mankind, be humble. Because I heard the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Man tawadu alilla rafa'ullahu fa huwa fi nafsi sagirun wa fi ayun in nas azim. ومن تكبر ودعه الله فهو في عيون الناس صغير وفي نفسه قدير حتى لهو أحول عليهم من قلب أو خنزير. This narrated by the Hakim. He said, look, let make sure that you lower yourself, be humble, because anybody who humbles himself before Allah, who humbles himself for Allah's sake, Allah will elevate him, and in his own heart he will see himself as a small person. But in the eyes of everybody, Allah will make him big. He said, now anybody who believes that he wants to elevate, who is who has arrogance, he says, Allah will lower him. In his heart, he will feel big. But in the eyes of people, he will be very small. And when he continues, he will be ridiculed to the extent that people will hate him as they hate the dog or the pig. So it's very, very essential. It has its consequences. So it's the opposite. It is not takabur, it is not arrogance that will elevate you. This and this indicates that what will elevate you is humility. People love humility. You know, you might have a boss, you think, everybody we all know, you have, if you have a boss who is arrogant, you may not be able to do anything about it because you want your bread and butter. But behind him, you will always talk about the fact that, well, I don't like him, he's just too arrogant. <laughs> it is just that you cannot do it. When they move him to another section, you will be rejoicing. Yes, they have taken him away now, so we can have some fresh air. So it is very, very essential, my dear brothers and sisters, that we learn from this. Nobody can check it for us. We can check it on our own, and the other thing is very easy for us. Before I make the dua, we have two announcements. We have الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Please make the lie straight. Uh, make the lie straight is part of the salah. But come on the lie on the Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقبوب عليهم ولا الضالين أولم 
يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيب مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي الرميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توكلون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعاديات ضبها فالموريات قدها فالمجيرات صبحا فعثرنا به نقعا فوسطنا به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بغفر ما في القبور وغسل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 